Let's talk some toys in here. <laughs> hey, what's up, everyone? Today is the man child. All right, so today we're going to go over the new Masters of the Universe, Masterverse, Princess of Power, Shadow Weaver, as part of uh, the um, Series 8 of yeah, the Masterverse line. Yeah, looking pretty cool. You know, uh, Shadow Weaver goes back to the Filmation cart share of Filmation cartoon. I remember watching it as a kid. I've seen her a couple times. Um, who doesn't like a uh, yeah evil floating witch, <laughs> whatever she's supposed to be? Um, but I kind of forgot about her. When I started collecting the classics line, as I started collecting those figures later on, I came across a Shadow Weaver. I think she was exclusive. I do have her in a card. I'll bring that in and compare it real quick. But I think out of all the classics, she's probably one of the most expensive figures to own now or find, like on eBay, in card with the mailer. Along with like the Sorceress and Fisto and a few figures like that. Um, so it's cool now to see one. It has a good amount of articulation. I don't, I don't think much different to classics, maybe some. But, you know, at retail or uh, online, once again, for a lot cheaper price. Here's a quick peek of Shadow Weaver's art in the back of the box. Yeah, I love that illustration there. Got some spell casting going out of the arms. Full moon in the background. It's coming down some kind of, uh, and it looks like a cave or something with some eerie trees. I think it's also neat that we have the evil horse symbol up in the corner here. And here's a quick look at the bio. You want to pause and read that. And drop down to the bottom. These are all four figures in Wave 8. And here's some additional art of Shadow Weaver on the right-hand side of the box. And here's a quick look around with Shadow Weaver and all accessories at a box. So taking a closer look at Shadow Weaver's head, hood, and face. Look at that. That's real creepy. Love the way all that black is done in there. I don't know if she's a shadow or it's skin or what it is, but yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, instead of yellow glowing eyes, it's got like gold painted eyes. So that's unique. Works pretty cool for this character. Now as far as the hood, so I right, turn it aside. Check that out. You got all that sculpting there and a pointed hood back there. It is flexible. I don't think it articulates. No, nope, it's just all one sculpted piece, all part of that hood. Um, and the hood doesn't pull off the face. It never did. It uh, looks like it's all part of the sculpt in there. Um, yeah, it has the face mask, you know, cloth going across her face. Also, all part of the sculpt of the hood, so nothing comes off. Like You couldn't expose his head if you wanted to for something different. I always wonder what she looks like under there. So moving down, she also has like this neck collar here. That that piece does move and looks like it removes. So you can see that's kind of soft, right? It's so a front and back. It does have a little point that goes down over the back of the shoulders here. We'll take that off soon because I guess we got to take the hood off and we'll check out the cape. Um, but otherwise, pretty cool design. Creepy looking. So moving down to her chest and box. So she has articulation here. Right, move left to right. She can go forward and back about, I don't know, all the way back about that far. Um, it's got this sculpted on horde bat belt. Now that's also... Yeah, that's also a part of the dress. Looks like it just painted. It doesn't look like it's uh, separate or glued on. The or cloak, excuse me. It yeah, it's pretty um, basic. You know, there's no other, nothing else on it aside sculpted lines up in here. It's also like a okay, some type of like bat batish symbol going back to the horde up on the chest there, under the neck. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You go all the way down. I think that she doesn't have legs. Never did. But this um, cloak here. Check that out. So it does separate in two different pieces, right? So there's the front, you can roll all the way back, and the back can go up like this. And then she has these other pieces in here that do articulate. So you have an articulation piece here that can spin, go back and forth, so it almost has a ball joint. And same thing up here in the waist can also turn and go back and forth as well. Now she also comes with a figure stand, so you can you can see where it plugs in there. So it's kind of like on a little um, a hinge joint and then you're gonna pop it into that hole in the bottom like this and that's what pretty much holds her up or helps her float I mean she stood okay up on the lower part of this cloak because how hard this piece is under this um you know these individual pieces but that's pretty cool you know so you check her out she looks like all right and now you can articulate her between the hinge joint in this stand and these individual pieces underneath this cloak check that out you can like go backward floating forward off to the side make all kinds of wacky positions or movements if you want to something like that check it out so moving back up to her arms and the arm articulation so you can see she yeah you know typical she can go all the way up down forward and back she has bicep swivel can bend all the way up the elbows to the face um she has comes with two okay so she has a semi-open like a weapon gripping hand on the right side and a hinge joint it spins it goes in and out and then like more of an open spell casting hand on the left. And then she comes with two additional hands 
that play reverse roles for each side. I'll bring them in a little bit. Um, now you can see she has like some sleeves painted on all the way up to the uh, close to the elbow here. So these are part of the sculpt paint rally. You know they're not going to come off. And both hand, both sides are exactly the same side. The hands as far as the articulation and paint. So moving back up to the head in the uh, the scarf piece around here. Um, so let's. So I guess we got to take the head off. Okay, there's the ball peg. Yep. So the head pops like that. And there's our little uh, little piece there with that. Check that out. And now with that scarf piece out of the way, we can remove the cape. So it comes off like this. And with the cape off, here's a quick look at it. So it's typical, yeah, master reverse cape material, which works well for this figure. It's a little done in the red, right? It's the, kind of the back of it or front. And here's the back. Here's our neck piece and the arms. Real quick, also threw the head and its scarf piece back on without the cape in the event you didn't want to use it. So she looks good without it, but I'd rather the cape and the head articulation too. I didn't go through that um, with the scarf piece on. She can go all the way forward back, you know, and spin left to right and rotate all around. So once again, taking the head and scarf piece back off, I'm going to reinstall this cape. So we know how the neck piece goes on here with the hole in it, but in the package, it looks like there's two... Um, see areas like sleeves that the arms are meant to go through so I'll put this side on like that and then we'll just you know slide the other side on too and work the hand through there and then put this neck piece back on and put that scarf piece back on and then put the head back on all right that looks better with the the way that now the cape is over the arms and of course put the head and everything back on just understand so check all that out of course you fix it back just move it around the way you got you know make it look natural so moving on to Shadow Weaver's other accessories. So like I said earlier, she comes with an additional pair of hands, but now an open spell casting hand for the right side and a closed weapon gripping hand for the left. So I'll just change one hand out, pull this right side off like that, and then I'll put the other spell casting hand in the side. And these hands also spin, go in and out on a hinge joint. Now here's Shadow Weaver casting some spells with her spell casting hands, but no magic coming out. <laughs> Gotta make believe. So to have a little fun, we don't have to make believe. I do have some energy effects from other figures. There's a bunch out there in the market. I think this came from the McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat 11 Raiden, I want to say. So it coils around her hand. Check that out. So it's got some kind of cool orange lightning magic effect. Works really well. And there's another action figure energy effect. I think it came from a Marvel figure, but yeah, it's kind of goofy. It's really soft. It, it doesn't hold right. It's heavy in the back, but you could position her to... Um, spell casting hand somewhat to hold it. It looks like she's shooting some type of uh, energy effect like that. So that's pretty cool. And for one last effect, so I changed out her weapon gripping hands on both the left and right side. And these are energy necroplasm effects from the new McFarlane Mortal Kombat 11 spawn. Or one of his spawns. A couple of them came with these. We check that out. It looks neat. Works well on her. So for her other accessories, she comes with a typical short spell casting wand with that green orb on top. And you also get a fiery or energy effect that's going to go on top of the wand. And then that energy or fire effects and go over top of the uh, orb on this wand, just like that. And we'll just put the wand in the right hand because I have the weapon gripping hand on. And now we have Shadow Weaver set up with the cape on properly. I put the other spell casting hand on the left side just to mix it up. And then, of course, we have the spell casting wand with the energy effect on the right with the closed weapon gripping hand. Check that out. And I guess if you wanted to, that energy effect could go on either hand. It's just casting some type of energy effect. Right now I got it on the uh, open hand, but could probably go in a closed hand as well. And for a quick comparison, here's my uh, Shadow Weaver and card here. And of course, our Massive Earth Shadow Weaver. Um, this one looks pretty cool, cool if you didn't get a chance to get the Classics one. I mean, the Classics one is always nice. Now, she did come with a spell casting book. Also, one that's warped. Uh, this one's a little better. I like the color on it. She didn't come with an effect. Um, she also hinged. Had some weird cuts that people didn't like the way she hinged where this one didn't and had all plastic like a plastic cape in the background it was known to crack and things i heard anyway but this one has a cloth so i yeah i like the design of this one a little better as far as the cloth and but i like the color better on this one and for one last side by side comparison so of course we have our new masterverse shadow weaver and this is the super seven club grayskull shadow weaver where it was supposed to be the figure directly out of the share cartoon or that's what she was supposed to represent um Came out pretty cool, I guess. Now, she had all, all plastic cape here, too. Same thing with the sleeves. Um, didn't have painted black nails, which this one does. Came with the wand. Pretty cool, but yeah, it's and, and also a stand. I don't think she had any... Did have articulation. Okay, yeah, and a waist in here. The belt did move. The arms, you can kind of see how everything articulates different from the Masterverse. But you want to 
So anyway, this is where the inspiration came from, and also a little bit of the classic. So if you're curious, that's those two side by side, and where basically her design came from. So overall, I think this new Masterverse Shadow Weaver came out pretty cool, you know? I mean, if you didn't get a chance to get the classics, or you didn't want to pick up that Super 7 Club Grayskull, which is more accurate to the Filmation cartoon, this one has a great mix of both characters to me, you know? Um, I like the articulation works well. Now, she has, of course, articulation in the uh, hands, and we could spin and go on hinge joints. We know where the Club Grayskull one didn't. Uh, the wand's pretty neat. You get this little energy fire effect, which I think is meant to go on a wand or in her hand. I like the way the head articulates this collar piece to come off and the cloth cape. This is a good example where the cloth cape is done really well for this figure. You know, that's the route they should have went where the sorceress, where I said in my review, I didn't like the cloth cape or it should have had feathered patterns or something different. I don't know, but it's it's great for the Shadow Weaver figure. Stands cool. Um, yeah, it would have been neat if she had some other type of energy effect like I showed, you know, wrap around a spell casting hand or something, but uh, you know, you can get them off other action figures as I showed and demonstrate the McFarlane or Marvel or something like that. And they work pretty cool. It's going to mess around with them. But otherwise, they did a good job with her, you know. Another figure I'm glad to have in the uh, Wave 8 Masterverse line. So hopefully I answer all your questions. I appreciate all you guys watching. And until next time, take care. <laughs>